My man. <laughs> Paul Fitzgerald in the house. Thank you, Jamie. Superintendent Fitzgerald, I should say. Thank you. Uh, first things first, before we get into how great an event this was, we should probably talk about Sally O'Malley. Yes, we should. What do you think of Sally O'Malley? She's just your mother-in-law, by the She's way. She's the best mother-in-law I've ever had. All right. Yeah. That, we, can, we can continue, <laughs> but i got to tell the story real quick. So we're at the Wiffle Ball Tournament. She walks up to me. She says, oh, my God, aren't you that guy from Call the Cops? So uh, right away, I'm like, all right, who puts you up to this man? And she's like, no, 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 I watch the show. So Sally, if you're watching the show, you better be watching because Paul's on tonight. Thank you for coming up and saying nice things to me, and thanks for watching the show. That makes you my mother. She, she, she raised a great family. Yeah. I was lucky enough to marry one of them. But yes. she raised a, a great group of six kids. You're a lucky guy. Very lucky. Great mother-in-law, great wife, great kids. Great, yeah. And a, and a great tournament. Let's just get into it right at the top. I mean, you put together the Wiffle Ball Tournament, all the proceeds go to juvenile diabetes. Um, let me just say, why, why juvenile diabetes? Why was that the cause? Well, like I said in the, in the clip, my daughter was diagnosed uh, three years ago at the age of eight, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I had no understanding of what diabetes was. I never really knew many people with it, uh, didn't pay much attention to it, but right. certainly have learned a whole lot in three years and always felt like I have an obligation to do my part and hadn't done anything up till about six months ago. We came up with an idea. I was being promoted. Yeah. And Congratulations. I, thank you. Very, very thank you. To see that. But the reason I bring that up is uh, my secretary wanted to have a party for me. Yeah. My wife wanted to have a party. And I, I'm not into parties for yeah. myself. But I thought maybe a fundraiser. Here we, go. we didn't do it that way, but we ended up coming up with the concept yeah. of, uh, of what we ended up running. So, so. Uh, again, uh, there's, so many, there's so many ways to raise money, road races, which I'm not a big fan of. But uh, the Wiffle Ball <laughs> Tournament was awesome. Yeah, I mean, you, you were able to involve the young kids, uh, adults if they wanted to come and play, well attended. Uh, who, who said Wiffle Ball Tournament? Was yeah, it? and what happened is uh, we started out thinking about a walk around the common. So we wanted something that my daughter's friends could do, right. eight, ten-year-old kids. So, sure. um, But then the Boston Common, there's not a lot of parking. Um, we were going to have a softball game. We wanted to do something different yeah. from the road race and golf tournament. And then Cecil Jones came up with the concept of a Wiffle Ball Tournament and, and located this new indoor field at the Boston Athletic Club right, right. that could entertain five games at once because we wanted a lot of teams to be involved. So. Now, Caroline's team, which you can see in the video footage, lost to these guys. <laughs> yes. Uh, what happened? Uh, did she pull a, a muscle? Did they sleep, not sleep in? Did they not go to bed? <laughs> yes, yeah, she must not, not have had a pregame meal. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> I'm sure there's some sort of ex, you know, explanation. But yeah. it was great. And this is the, but the fact that it came down to her team... No, like a boys versus right. girls, I thought was pretty cool. Right. It, re it really was. It worked out perfect. Yeah. I mean, so we had two tournaments. We had a kids' tournament in the morning, and then we had a, an adult competitive tournament yes. in the afternoon. And when I say adult, anyone 14 years or up played. Yeah. You know, they can compete in wiffle ball. And, uh, and the championship team was 14 years old, so they beat oh, all the kids. adults. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Any so. rules? Like uh, There was no fast pitch. Okay, I they threw so. pretty fast, yeah. but they, there was no 75, 80 mile right, an hour, which right. I hear some people can do. Yeah, some people can do it. I think, well, I'm going to have to talk about my athletic exploits, but, uh, <laughs> but no, but I mean... <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk hockey at Fenway later. Yeah, but no, but it was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was competitive but fair. It was. It was a competitive tournament. And uh, the kids' tournament, Cecil Jones ran that portion yeah. of it. So he ran the 9 to 12 kids' tournament. Sure. Went off without a hitch. Yeah. They had a ball. They all got to play a few games. And, uh, and the champions the ch champions won. They got yeah. tickets to the Red Sox and sneakers from New Balance. Phenomenal great. gifts, by the way. Great gifts. And, you know, I mean, who, who helped out? I mean, in terms of folks making donations. You, you talked about New Balance. Well, yeah, the big ones, New Balance obviously gave us uh, enough sneakers for the winners and, and uh, runners-up yep. on both divisions. So, you know, a, a good donation. Cool. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people, Royal Caribbean gave us a cruise for two to Bermuda. Hello. Um, JetBlue well, gave us tickets to anywhere in the country, yeah, two people. Who won so, those? Do we know? Uh, the two tickets, the young guy from E13 won them. Okay, Cop. okay. Uh, Michelle Williams won the cruise. Nice. Brendan England won a nice uh, Red Sox gift uh, package. Nice. So the Red Sox were very good to yeah. us. Did they uh, autograph a couple autograph jerseys? Yeah, a lot Pedroia. of yeah. Buck Holson, Pedroia. Yeah, two great jerseys. Two bats by Ortiz. Yeah. Um, ton of balls by Beckett and company, all those guys. Steve Young. Steve Young Football jersey, jersey that he donated. Hall of Famer. FedExed it to us. That was yeah, nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I had to say there was a lot of good stuff there. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So you, you come up with the idea, idea of wiffle ball. Um, how tough was it to, to, to get the word out? How tough was it to put together a tournament like this? Or yeah, we did, it, we did it in short order, so it was challenging. But uh, one of the things I thought I had at my uh, disposal was leveraging the guys out in the, in the field yeah. that I've come to know over my 24-year sure. career. So uh, we've never, I've never organized an event like this, so I, I called them in and, and told them what I was looking to do, and they were great. Yeah. Like, one thing I'll say about the Boston Police Department 
is we're an incredibly charitable organization. Yeah. We do, we give every day to mm -hmm. a charity. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, I give, you give, we yeah. all do. That building at Schroeder Plaza and all our districts, yep. there's constantly something going on. When the work, I agree with you, and just to, to kind of build upon your point, when the word goes out that people are putting something together, especially for a great cause like this was, yeah. um, but the men and women of the Boston Police Department understand the importance of getting involved they really do. And, and making a contribution. There was no question that was a, that was uh, on full display at, at, at the tourney a couple of weeks yeah. back. Yeah, no question. And they, you know, the, like we were talking earlier, the, the base, the, the bulk of the money that we raised was through raffle prizes. Okay. So, you know, the merchants throughout the city were incredibly generous to donate yeah. gift certificates or, you know, uh, sports memorabilia, things like that that we could put in a raffle. And I don't they, mean to bury the lead, but you raised 30 grand. We raised $30,000. I mean, was that the goal? No. Our goal when we started out was 15. Yeah, I would I'd say yeah. 10, 15. Well, yeah. 10. I, even that sounds like a lot of money, but. I know. It is a lot of money. It is a lot of it money. It is. I mean, who wouldn't want $10,000 right. to give to a great charity? So to build a to, deck. Yeah. <laughs> dish, right? There's a lot you could do, but no, what you said was right. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, I can't thank the, the district people. Yeah. They supported it. They bought a ton of raffle tickets. They came with their kids and. And uh, we just had a ball, but yeah. you know, the, my committee. I want to get to yeah, it's right. You had, a com you had a committee. I yeah. actually sent in a resume and an application for the committee. I didn't just to just speak well, out competitive. Actually, advice. actually, we had a committee, but you were also part of the event. So yeah. we we locked jo Jamie up every early on <laughs> to uh, to MC the event, right, which and, I was, uh, more, than, so I was more than happy to do that. Yeah, it was great. So we bought Rene Roncourt for the anthem, and then now, you, you took over. How do you get Rene Roncourt? You know, he does the Emerald Society every year. So uh, Joe Sullivan, uh, yeah, great good, kid, good Joe friend Sullivan, of mine, yep. sat in the gang unit, uh, offered to to get him in, involved. So now, he, you know. was it? He did he know him or had he? What did yeah, he, he knows him because okay. Joe runs the Emerald Society. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I mean that so, by itself. Was a great touch. It was unbelievable. And he gave a couple little fist pump at the end. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is yeah. Great. If you're a hockey fan, which we are, which as hockey I mean, fans we could very listening much listening to him singing right there yeah. next to you was cool. I thought it was awesome. And yeah. speaking of hockey, he actually yeah. had an, an NHL player. We did. Uh, Keith, uh, Keith Yandel. Keith Yandel plays for the Phoenix Coyotes. Yep. Uh, grew up with my nephew Jake Fitz, and uh, was very, very generous. Yeah. Brought a shirt autographed by yeah. him. You called yeah. out a winner. We picked out a hat. He came up and presented the shirt. So yeah, it was really cool. thrilling. The young kid, right, who yeah. actually, not only do you get the autograph, the autograph jersey by itself is yeah. great, but you actually had the yeah. player. Give it to you. Give it to you. Right. I thought that, I thought Shake that was awesome. Shake his hand, get yep. a picture. And, and Keith played in the tournament and, and made it to the semifinals. Oh, he did. And I said to him when it was over, I'm like, Keith, what's up? You're an NHL player, and here we go, a 14-year-old team I just awarded great, great. the championship. Oh, did, did his team lose the 14-year-old team? No, they didn't oh. make it that far. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he's competitive in yeah. whatever he plays. Oh, I bet. But a really good guy. You're going to have yeah. that competitive nature. And he said next year he'll uh, bring some of the Bruins players. So. Oh, he did? Yeah. I'm, coming, yeah. I'm definitely going back yeah, next year. Yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, so the committee. So the committee. How did Brendan England get on the committee? In, uh, in well, you know what? Brendan was really important. What happened was um, Cecil Jones. Yeah, who's Cecil's just, awesome. You know, like, he, in all sincerity, yeah. Cecil Jones. Yeah. Uh, Karen Keller. Yeah. Kelleher. Kelleher. Yeah. Um, Jen Fahey. Jen Fahey. Tommy Joyce. Yeah. Uh, Sean Butler. Sean Butler. Butler in England. I, I'm skeptical, but I'm just, I can't. Imagine, I don't even know what those. Guys no. What are. happened was, you know, we come up with the concept. Cecil comes up with the yep. concept, leaning heavily on Cecil's wisdom because yep. he's done so many charitable yeah. events. Had he seen the event done, or how did no. he come up with it? No. Uh, I don't know. Just seemed like the right sure. thing to do. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, to bring in old, you know, again, young and old. You know, kids and adults. I can't. I couldn't think of a better better way to do that. Right. It was cool. Anyone can play wiffle ball. Anybody can play. So then, Karen Kelleher really became the backbone of uh, of the committee of of driving the event, of yeah, making sure the like, tickets were out. Yeah, she was. She was. She was. She was. She was. pretty heavy. Yeah, she was. She, she, she said, "You're going to MC yeah. the event." I said, "Well, I have to check my schedule." She said, "I already checked it." And I said, "Okay." Absolutely. Brendan England came up with the. He wrote the rules. He's a young kid. Him and Sean Butler play wiffle ball. There we go. There we so go. So they they we, go. we leaned on them heavily for that. Jen Fay, he was. Karen's partner in crime. Tommy Joyce, I talked about Cecil ran the morning. Yep. Tommy ran the whole afternoon, okay. the more challenging one, yep. uh, the five hour Which one with the adults. More, like you said, a little bit more competitive. And, yeah, it was competitive, but he ran it really well. Yeah, I thought really the rules well. were, it's funny you say that because I thought the rules were great. Because I yeah, mean, you, you had great. the netting and you had the yeah. line on the net and above yeah. the net was a home run, below yeah. the net I think was, I think it was an out. Yeah. But you know, you catch a ball, it's an out. But it was just, it moved quickly and it made sense. And right. it made for a fun game. You had the wooden plank behind. Yeah. So obviously. Yeah, you know, we had the strikes on. Yeah, I love that. Tommy Joyce made that from scratch. Love, I thought that was, yeah. uh, kudos really to TJ cool. for doing yeah. that because I thought that was, it was, was awesome. It was really important. And, uh, and it was like Fenway because there's so many um, crazy structural Angles, issues. Right, yeah. You know, it could hit a, a venting pipe yeah, or whatever. You the roof. You so we had rules to cover all that. Okay, good.